All right. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the Building a Single Page Apps with Lightning Components session. My name is Rodrigo Ribocas. I'm a senior ISV technical evangelist at Salesforce. Before we start, Salesforce is a publicly traded company, so please make all your purchasing decisions based on current and public available functionality only. So what is today's session all about, right? So we're going to show you guys a very cool custom Lightning component that our team here at Salesforce has created called Send Offer. And we have built this uh, custom component with a very interesting architecture, which is called Single uh, Page Application Architecture, or SPA, right? So we're going to show you guys some alternatives uh, for you guys to build something similar. And time allowing, we're going to open up for Q&A at the end. So Single Page Application, or SPA, right? What, do, what does that mean? So SPAs, they are web apps that basically they load a single uh, page um, for the application and dynamically update parts of that page whenever the user interacts with the application, right? So uh, single page apps, they have three uh, interesting and very specific characteristics. They have no uh, full page reloads. Uh, they are client side centric, so most of the work happens on the browser side, and they have a very fluid and responsive user experience. So if you guys think about it, actually Salesforce uh, Lightning Experience and Salesforce Mobile Experience, they are single page apps themselves, right? You notice we're not reloading the full page whenever the user interacts with the app all the time. So the idea is that you guys can build uh, something similar with your Lightning components as well. So here's our send offer Lightning component, right, our SPA. So and don't worry, we're going to take a look at the code and, uh, on the component live. But I just want to mention that it's part of our recruitment application that we use for demos with partners and customers like you guys. So our recruitment application covers the vanilla use case of candidates, interviews, offers, and so on. So this send offer lightning component was actually built so the hiring manager could create and send a can um, an offer letter to the candidate whenever it's the appropriate time to do so. Right? And it has four different stages. It has the detail stage, the edit stage, the review stage and the results stage. So let's go take a look at that. All right. So here we are. So here's our recruitment application, right? And um, I am loading a candidate record detail page. And I'm going to launch that send offer uh, custom component that I mentioned, our SPA, using this button here, which is basically a quick action. So the idea here is that the uh, hiring manager would enter some salary information, some bonus information. They would choose an offer letter template. And they would click Next. So this is the first detail stage. It would click Next. And that would take them to the second stage on our SPA, which is the added stage. And here we bring back to the user uh, a merged offer letter uh, body with the values that they entered on the previous stage, right? So here on the second stage, the hiring manager can make some changes to the offer letter body. And they can click on Next, which takes them to the third stage in our SPA, which is the review stage. Here they have a read-only view, so they can take a last view on the offer letter before they finally click on Confirm and Send. And that's when we send the offer letter to the candidate by email, and we create some records on the Salesforce org, right? So I do want to go back to our deck, because I want to uh, show you guys uh, the architecture. So our send offer uh, Lightning component, this SPA, it has a parent Lightning component, what you guys see here on the screen. It's called offer letter SPA.CMP. And this parent basically holds this uh, label that you guys see here at the top, the send offer, and also the progress bar. And inside this parent, we create four different child Lightning components at different times, or we make them visible. We're going to take a look at that. So first, when our uh, parent component, our SPA, first loads, we display this offer details child component inside the parent. That's where we enter the salary and the bonus information. And then when the user clicks on Next, on that Next button, uh, we, just, we basically hide that first child component, and we unhide the second child component in our SPA. OK? So you guys may be wondering, OK, that's great, but you have all these child components inside our parents. So how come only one of them are uh, visible at a time, right? So I want to show you guys the code real quick. Uh, so let's go to our parents' uh, components markup here. Um, and I want to scroll down on the parents' components markup because I want to show you the approach we use. And we're going to talk about other approaches later on. So here you can see that on the parents' level markup, we define basically 
um, four different HTML div tags. And inside those div tags, we have uh, a reference to each of those four child components that we're creating inside our SPA, right? So basically, by using this approach, we are rendering all these four child components inside our parent at once, OK? And how come only one of them, how come only the offer details, which is the one that uh, the user is entered, the salary and bonus is available, uh, they should be all be stacking up, right? So let me show you how, what we did, the approach we used. So basically, on the parent level, we handle the Lightning uh, system init event, OK? So that notifies us that our parent has initialized. And then we, have, we invoke this uh, JavaScript action on our parent's JavaScript controller, doing it. So let's take a look at what we're doing there. So basically, we knew that we had to hide the three other uh, child lightning components in our SPA that shouldn't be visible at this particular stage, right? So what we did is we used uh, basically JavaScript variable and component.find to find the HTML div nodes by their uh, IDs where those three child components that should be invisible at this stage are. So once we have them, we use this approach of dynamically adding a CSS class to those HTML div nodes to basically hide them. So we use a.u2.add class to add this toggle class to each of those three uh, child components that shouldn't be visible at this stage. And you guys may be wondering, what's inside this toggle class, right? So let's go to our style file here on our parent's Lightning Components bundle. This basically toggle sets the display of those three children to none. So we make them invisible. And we only leave that first uh, child component visible at this stage. And this is all great, but you guys know that when the user clicks on next and back, we want to basically hide and show the different child Lightning Components, right? So how do we do that, right? I do want to show you the, f the markup for the first child lightning component that we have on our SPA, which is the offer details uh, lightning component. And take a look at that next button that the user clicks to advance actually lives on the child components level markup. Okay? So we knew as developers, our development team knew that we needed some way to communicate from child component to parent components level that the user is done with interacting with that first child lightning component, right? So what we did is we created a custom lightning event called bubbling event that each child component in our SPA is going to fire and notify the parent that the user is done with the child component or not. So the type of that event is offer SPA notifier event. And I do want to show you guys the markup real quick. So this is a simple uh, custom lightning event that we created with this type of component which is perfect for these scenarios when you have a nested Lightning Components hierarchy, meaning parents and child. And you want to uh, bubble up information from the child to parent components level. Okay? So inside this custom Lightning event, we created basically one attribute, which is called component action of type string, which is basically for each child component in our SPA to put a message and send it to the parent level so the parent can control the visibility of the children. Right? So let's go back to our first child lightning component. And I want to go to that next button where we see uh, here down on line 37. And I want to show that we invoke that handle next click action on this parent component's uh, JavaScript controller. So let's take a look what we're doing there. So handle next click. Basically, what we do here is we instantiate in JavaScript, in JavaScript using component.getEvent, that bubbling event that we just saw the markup. And then we use component.setParams to set a value uh, for that component action attribute of our bubbling lightning event. In this case, as we're dealing with the first child in our SPA, we pass a very specific message, offer details next, meaning the user is done interacting with this offer details lightning component. And then we simply fire this bubbling event here on line 28. And now, because it's a lightning event of type component, it's going to bubble up to any parent in our hierarchy, right? So let's take a look. Let's go back to our parent um, lightning component markup, because I do want to show you what happens on the parent level now, OK? So we have, um, basically, on the parent's markup, we have a Nora handler to handle that bubbling event that each child component in our SPA is going to send it with a specific message. And whenever we handle that bubbling event, we're going to execute this JavaScript action called handle bubbling on the parent components level. So let's take a look at the controller here on the parents level. So handle bubbling. 
basically, we use JavaScript to uh, grab the parameters or the information that each children in RSPA is bubbling up using that event. And then we use the JavaScript uh, switch statement to basically inspect which message we receive from one of the child components in RSPA. And in our case here, in this first case, if the message was offer details next, we know that we're ready to hide that first child component in RSPA and unhide the second one, right? So we do that. To do that, you guys, uh, we, we use the same approach we use on that init event param. Basically, we use uh, component.find to find the div of that first child that now needs to be invisible. We use a.util.add class to add that same toggle class that we added on the init event now to the first child component that needs to be made invisible, right? And now we need to unhide the second child component that we had first hidden when we first initialized our SPA, right? So what we do is we use component.find. We find the, the HTML div of the second child component. And now we use a.util.remove class to remove the toggle class that we had first added to the second child so it becomes visible inside our SPA. So this is a, how we, we use uh, Lightning events and CSS to play around with this uh, show and hide child components in our SPA. I do want to show you guys a visual representation of that. So here we have, uh, in blue, our parent uh, lightning component right from our SPA. And in green, our first child lightning component offer details, which then uses that bubbling event and passes a specific message inside that event, which bubbles up to the parent level. And then the parent plays around with visibility of the different children. So this is the approach that we use again, to control visibility of child components in our SPA, OK? So now let's go back to our demo arc, because I do want to uh, call you guys' attention for uh, another uh, requirement that we had. So when the user starts entering information in our single uh, page app here, inside each of the child lightning components in our single page app, we need somehow to communicate the information that we're uh, capturing from the user to the next child lightning component in our SPA. Because remember that the ultimate goal here is for us to send an offer letter to the candidate at that very last step, on the result step, right? So uh, what we did here, would it make sense for us to save this information to the Salesforce org and then retrieve from the next child lightning component? Probably not, right? We will be making this very expensive wasting a lot of calls to the server side. So we took advantage of the Lightning uh, component framework uh, event system as well. So we created another Lightning event, a different type of Lightning event, just to store the data that we capture from the user locally. And then the next child component in our SPA can receive that data. So let me show you an example of what I mean. So here, um, if we go to our code, um, I do want to go to that first uh, child component again that we um, make visible in our SPA. And I want to uh, point that we, ha we registered that we're going to fire a different type of event as well. So that we call app event of type candidate detail event. So let's take a look at what that is, right? So candidate detail event, it's another uh, custom lightning event that we created with this purpose to share data between the child lightning components. And you notice that the type here is application. And this is important because remember that we used component before when we had to bubble up information to parents. So whenever you need to share information with Lightning components that do not live on that parent and child uh, scenario, uh, the recommended uh, way is to use uh, Lightning events of type application because they follow a published subscriber module. So meaning that all the child, other child components that need to receive this information, even though they don't live on, on a hierarchy, they can subscribe and receive the information through this event. And notice that we created a bunch of attributes here inside our event for uh, the purpose of uh, storing information locally. So we have uh, an attribute to uh, store the salary information, the bonus information, and so on. Right? Let's go back to our first child lightning component. And remember that when the user clicks on the next button, not only we fire that bubbling event, but I want to show you uh, straight here on the helper, um, helper file for this lightning, child lightning component that we also instantiate now that app event, that application event that is gonna, we're going to use to store the data locally. And then we use component.setparams to set the information that we know so far that this child lightning component is grabbing. We don't need to set all those attributes that you guys just saw on the lightning event, just the information that we know so far. And then we we've basically fire 
this uh, Lightning application event with, with the information that we know so far. And now the next child Lightning component in our SPA is going to receive that information all on the browser side. So let's take a look. Uh, the next child Lightning component is called uh, Offer Template. So notice here on its markup that it basically has an Aura handler to handle that uh, application event that the first child component is sending with the information. So now here on the second component, we can use this information. We can aggregate more data, and we can share this data with the next child lightning component. Let's go back to our deck, because I do want to show you guys a visual representation of that as well. So the first child lightning component here in yellow on the left uh, basically grabs some information from the user, uh, instantiates that application event, and populates with this information in brown here that, that we know so far. We fire that event. The next child Lightning component in our SPA receives that because it's subscribing to that Lightning application event. And then uh, grabs more information from the user, uh, instantiates the same application event, fires it. The next child receives it, and so on. Notice that we haven't made one single call to the Salesforce org yet. So when we get to the last child Lightning component in our flow here in our SPA, that's when we have the ultimate aggregated information, and then we are ready to make a call to the Salesforce org, basically to send that offer letter uh, to the candidate and to uh, receive information back, the results of that information sent, so we can display inside the Lightning component. OK, so notice that we made use of two different types of Lightning events and CSS to accomplish this SPA architecture. Okay? But that's not the only approach to create something similar like that, where you have different child components inside a parent uh, uh, lightning component. We showed you guys the CSS approach. There is also the RIF approach and the dynamic creation approach. So let's take a look at when it's best to use each of these approaches. So the CSS approach, um, you guys should use it when uh, you need to show and hide the same child lightning components frequently, right? Uh, the conditions change frequently. You, you guys remember, inside our SPA, we have the next and the back button, right? So that means that we know that the user needs to load those child lightning components at least once. And they can go and back, back and forth. So it really makes sense for us, since we didn't have a lot of child lightning components and they were not doing a lot of expensive stuff like making calls to the server or things like that, to really load them at once inside our parent components markup and then just play around with their visibility using the CSS approach, that uh, a.u2.add class approach. Okay? I mean, the main benefit when you have a scenario like that, that not, it's not a very complex SPA, is that you basically load everything on the DOM tree, and then your SPA becomes very fast after that. Okay? This toggling back and forth with child lightning components. But our suggested approach for most of the use cases, because um, what we see from customers and partners is that the child components may be doing a lot of expensive stuff, and the users may not necessarily need to render or look at some of the child components in your SPA. Uh, maybe, maybe you created a child component that is just a help right, for the user. Maybe the user doesn't need help. Why would you render and, uh, everything on the DOM tree if the user even doesn't need to see that child lightning component once? So by using RIF, um, you guys can create some logic to basically defer the creation and the loading of the child components based on a Boolean uh, attribute of your parent components. So it's best to use uh, when you know that the users, you may have child components that the users may not even need to load when the parent components start, and your child components are not doing expensive stuff. And then we got to this last approach, which is to dynamically create the child components inside your parent. And this is what developers love because you get code level control of uh, how you create and how you destroy the different child components inside your SPA from your parent component's JavaScript code. So it's best to use whenever on your apps you need more flexibility. Maybe you need to create different child components with different attributes. So if you have code level control, you can do a lot of more interesting stuff, right? So. Um, that, that's basically the approach whenever your uh, Lightning components start uh, becoming too complex. This is what we suggest. I have posted to our session, um, session page on dreamforce.com. If you access through the website, this deck, we have some links here that you guys can click on when you get to that page and open the deck. Basically, some documentation pages of things that we, uh, are related to what we're covering here today. And also, this GitHub code repository 
with that send offer lightning component SPA. If you guys want to fork it, make it your own, make a lot of interesting things, let us know. I don't believe we have much time left for Q&A, so thank you. <laughs>